case you haven't heard, Johansson's greenhouse on the Beltline is closing a week from Sunday after 49 years. Yeah, we're, we were sad to hear that. And Karen Johansson is going to join us live from the greenhouse. We're taking your calls tonight. You can ask her plant questions or you can just uh, say hello, express, you know, ask any questions about what you want to say about the greenhouse. Karen, I put that out on Twitter this afternoon and we've got, we got oh, a lot of response. Okay. People were saddened and surprised to hear that you're closing. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's been an emotional roller coaster. It really has. We were expecting it for myself and my family and my employees, but the outpouring from our customers has just been heartfelt. It's, it's just really been a journey and it's going to be hard to close. It's, we've been here actually 54 years since um, 1960. And I've actually worked here since the eighth grade and uh, that's uh, 41 years ago. And uh, so it's gonna be a huge transition for all of us. All right, let's get to the calls, uh, see what folks have to say. We're gonna start with uh, James and Madison. Hi, James. James, you there? Hi there. Hi there, yeah. I was wondering, do you still have vegetable starts available? We don't, we are all out of that, sorry. We still have a lot of vegetable seeds all of them are buy one, get one until we close. Yeah, yeah but no vegetable start, sorry. And then the other question, do you have a demolition contractor lined up for the demolition of, your, of the premises? Well, that's an interesting question, no. A lot of our greenhouses are sold. They're gonna go and have a new life. And a lot of the pieces are gonna be recycled. But um, that is not something I'm involved in at all. Um, Mr. Baxter, the owner of Kaiser Ford, he owns the property now and he's dealing with all the demolition permits and all of that. I think James might have been looking for a job, <laughs> perhaps. I think so. <laughs> all right, let's go to our next caller. Uh, Rick in Orfordville. Hi, Rick. Are you there? What's your question? Yeah, I am. Um, I've got some bleeding hearts that are next to a building I want to paint. Can I cut them down? Well, are they starting to yellow? Um, yeah, maybe a bleeding little. Hearts yeah, bleeding hearts go kind of semi-dormant. So I think in that instance, you'd be all right. A lot of perennials, I wouldn't recommend it. But just carefully dig them up, maybe pot them in a pot, keep them watered, and then after you're done painting, then put them back in and uh, keep them watered. All right, let's go to Melvin now in Portage. Hi, Melva. Hi. I have a trumpet vine that will not bloom, and I don't know what to do about it. I, I, my neighbors gave it to me about five years ago, and I'm about ready to dig uh -huh. it out because I'm kind of sick of it. <laughs> well, sometimes it'll take a few years to get established. Um, are you pruning them back? Oh, she's gone. Sorry. Okay. Well, trumpet vines... I don't know that there's anything real specific that you need to do. They need some sun, and depending on if she's pruning them too heavily, that might be part of it. Yeah. All right, let's go to Lynette in Monticello. Hi, Lynette, what's your question? Hi, I have a Norfolk pine tree. It's indoor. I moved it from a smaller pot to a bigger one, and it's kind of droopy now. I'm wondering how much to water it. Okay. Well, here's the deal on, on Norfolk Pines. They have very, very small roots. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you went from a little pot to a big pot. That might yep. be your problem. You have all that extra soil around the roots. Uh -huh. You water it, they stay too wet, and then they rot. Okay. So depending on how big of a jump you did, um, that might be part of the problem. All right. So I think you want to know what's going to... What you're going to be doing now, Karen? You and the, your brother and sister? And what am, yeah. Well, my brother and sister are going to retire. The sale allowed that. And uh, most importantly, the sale allowed my mom to be able to stay in her home as long as she wanted to um, or wants to. Uh, the, what I'm going to do is kind of the uh, million dollar question. I've been exploring a lot of options. Uh, a lot of our local people have asked me about working for them. I need to find a good fit. And I have been talking to people, and if I can find that right fit, 
you'll see me again. I, I have a feeling this, this is not my last rodeo. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. And, Ooh, yeah. And it's not your last time at Live If I no, were to we continue. No, we hope you'll continue with us. Okay. Yeah. Well, I sure hope not. <laughs> I love doing live at five, so you have my cell phone number. Don't put it on TV, please. We won't, we won't, we won't. But uh, you can call me anytime. All right, we will see you soon, and, Karen. Uh, thanks, thanks very much well, for being with thank us. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. And one last thing. Our last weekend is next weekend, August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, will be final markdowns. Everything that we have left, final markdowns. And then Sunday, August 4th, we're having a party. We're having cake. We're having <laughs> wine. At least I'm having wine. <laughs> and, um, and cheese. So anyone, come, tell us goodbye. Our customers, we've had people have seen me grow up. So please, come on, come on in. All right, Karen, thanks very much. And coming up tonight Thank on you. News 3 at 10, I have a travel report looking back at the history of Johansson's Greenhouse.